we're definitely the, the larger of the three institutions. And so really a lot of it is BU sharing their programs with Lock Haven and Mansfield. I guess my main question and consideration would be following this integration process would be, what are we getting? You know, given that we are the bigger slice of the pie and Mainsfield and Lock Haven are smaller in terms of population, what, what, the, what are the benefits for us? You know, what are we going to get for our departments in general? My name is Eva and I'm a sophomore at Bloomsburg University. Shortly after transferring to Bloomsburg, I learned about the proposed integration of Bloomsburg, Lock Haven, and Mansfield. As the public comment period draws near, I'm searching for the answers to my questions about how integration will affect Bloomsburg University academically. The Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education plans to combine Bloomsburg, Lock Haven, and Mansfield in the Northeast and California, Edinburgh, and Clarion in the West. According to PASHI, the institutional integrations are a way to consolidate university operations and academic programming to affordably and sustainably expand student opportunities. The integration would create a single accredited entity that has one unified leadership, a single faculty and staff, a single program array, a unified enrollment strategy, and a unified budget. So why is this happening? Over the past decade, the Pasha University's overall enrollment total has been decreasing, partly due to lower high school graduation rates and financial challenges. So the system has to find a way to adapt and survive, leaving them with integration as potentially their only secure option. I met with Bloomsburg University's provost, Diane Rogers Atkinson, to find out more about how integration will affect Bloomsburg University academically. I am the lead academic um, for the whole integration project. So myself and the other two provosts um, at Mansfield and Lock Haven, we collaborate together with them serving as co-leads to help determine what the new program array would be for the integrated universities. You know, I think there's a lot of um, opportunities there for students that we wouldn't have had before. A good example would be for Bloomsburg, we currently don't offer any um, associate degrees. And we many times have students who are not quite ready to finish a four-year degree. And so when they leave us after a year or two, um, they, they have a lot of credits, but they don't have a degree with that. So now we'd have access to the associate degrees at Mansfield and Lock Haven. And those students could have some degree completion. Really for Bloom students, there aren't too many negatives because they're really all of our programs that we currently have will continue. It just means that they may have some classes that the professor while teaching here live may also be beaming that out to, um, for example, Lock Haven or Mansfield. Um, if there's a small section so that you would have students sitting on three different campuses taking the same class. So that could feel a little different, you know, sharing those classes. But on the other hand, it gives them an opportunity to interact with a broader base of students than they normally did. So for Bloom, the, the program rate looks like everything you have right now. Uh, there's nothing that's been taken away. And the financial plan should help expand and, and create some new revenue. And there are a lot of cost savings that come with integration as well, um, primarily in the reduction of the number of administrators that you would have in the new university. So we're not picturing students like going back and forth between different campuses. Um, there are some programs that have um, suggested some in-residence kind of activities. So there are things that we might take students to but not necessarily say you have to be like, on Monday and Wednesday you're in Bloom and on Tuesday and Thursday you're in Lock Haven. Classes should still be available and still face-to-face -face primarily on the Bloom campus because we are the, the lead campus for a lot of the, the very large programs that, that we would start to share with Mansfield or Lock Haven. So uh, the way to kind of picture that is building out our current Zoom rooms on steroids. So currently, you know, they're kind of flat where we'll be upgrading that technology so that you can see the students, you can hear the students participating. And so you, the big change may be you'll have a class here that you're face-to-face -face and a professor, we have like a TA on the other campus and you're sitting in, at Mansfield watching a professor from Bloom. There could be times where the other could happen. Maybe we have a really amazing professor at Mansfield who has some specialization and they beam it back over here. I realize that there's a budget that each school has to share, and I'm thinking, how will that affect us financially? If we're one of the wealthier campuses, like, will the other schools get more money than we will? I'm kind of interested in whether or not there will be students that transfer 
after integration. I think for the future generations coming up and other students that are possibly transferring in, I do think it's a matter of is there enough space? Is there enough you know, professors, uh, human resources and assets in terms of classes, financial aid, grants and scholarships? After interviewing the provost and students, the 60-day public comment period began. Now it is up to us to determine the fate of integration. I'm still searching for more concrete answers about the future impacts of integration on Bloomsburg University.